again let's divide it into small elements okay we have been calling this element as small element whose area will be its y coordinate that is w its width is w multiplied by its uh, its length that is dx okay this is the area okay now this area this is the small area now as far as the this area w represents the load per unit length multiplied by dx represents the length therefore w into dx represents the force it represents the small force we can write this as as far as this w into dx is concerned it represents the small force we'll call this as df okay because w represents the load per unit w represents the load per unit length w represents the load per unit length and df represents uh, sorry w represents the load per unit length dx represents the length therefore load load per unit length multiplied by length represents the load so if we are taking small area strip from this load diagram it represents the small force acting on a very small element whose thickness is dx okay therefore it means in this small strip in this small strip the the load created by this the load produced the force produced by the small strip is equal to w into dx okay therefore how much will be the total load produced by this uh, produced by the the, the non uniformly distributed load therefore total load produced will be integration of this small load df that is equal to that's equal to integral of w dx okay integral of w into dx okay now as far as this w is concerned as far as dx is concerned this is our variable of integration and our variable of integration x varies from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 2 meter so we'll write limit of integration is x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 2 meter we can substitute integral df is the resultant force fr resultant force is equal to integral of 0 to 2 w dx w is equal to 60 x square w is equal to 60 x square newton per meter multiplied by and we have the variable of integration dx therefore this integration will be equal 60 will come out integration of x square is x cube by 3 with limits going from 0 to 2 that is equal to 20 x cube which is equal to 20 x cube when limit of integration is from 0 to 2 which is equal to substitute the limits that will be 160 okay that's equal to 160 the unit of w is newton per meter the unit of dx is meter therefore the unit of this resultant force will be newton it means it means this force whose intensity varies as the force whose intensity varies from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 2 meter this force this total force this non uniformly distributed force you can replace by a single force whose magnitude will be 160 newton okay so it means you have to perform the area you have to find the area under the load diagram that area under the load diagram will give you the resultant force therefore the resultant force is 160 newton it means that this entire non uniformly distributed load can be replaced by a single load whose the magnitude is 160 newton now the question is the important question is we know that the area under the load diagram gives us the total load or the resultant load now the question is where should we say that this load is acting should we place this 100 when we are replacing this non uniformly distributed load by a single load where should we say that this load single load of 160 that is i mean to say this load of this non-uniformly distributed load whose intensity varies as 60 x square is equivalent to a single load of magnitude 160 newton now the question is where should we say that this force of 160 newton is acting is this acting at point o should we replace this non-uniformly distributed load by a force of 160 newton acting at point o acting somewhere here acting somewhere here acting somewhere here or acting at this end where should this act okay the answer is as far as this load this load the resultant load which you have calculated from the load diagram this load acts at a point the point is called the centroid of the area this load is acting this load acts at the centroid of the area 
there are two questions that can arise in our mind. The first and foremost question is, how can we say that the force acts at the centroid? That's question number one. The question number two is, now if we are satisfied that definitely the force acts at point C called the centroid, how to find the centroid? Okay. Before I answer, answer, how can we say that the force acts at the centroid? Before I prove it to you that the force acts at the centroid, uh, we need to understand, I will make you understand how to find the centroid. So we will, uh, we will not answer question number one for some time. Let's go to finding the, finding the centroid, okay? Because that will complete our problem. Then we'll return of how can we say that this force is acting at the centroid. That's very, very important. So our part one is finding the resultant force. That is the area under the load diagram by integration process. We find the area under the load diagram that gives us the resultant force. Number two is this load you have to place at the centroid. The questions are two. How do we know that the load acts at the centroid? Number two is how to find the centroid. In order to complete the question, I will first of all answer how to find the centroid. Then later on, I will answer how do we know? Because if we do step number two, if we follow step number two of finding the centroid, I hope most of you can automatically understand the answer to the question number one. How do we know that the load X at the centroid? Okay. So uh, before I start uh, finding the centroid, I start showing you how to find the centroid. I would like to know question. I would like to take your question.